and welcome to the Tristan channel and in this video we'll be doing something that's uh, what's, what's the term not more tangible but sunk primal that may put you off of going for a swim in deep oceans because this is a video by top not top fives but top five best so the name's similar but it's a different channel 12 most terrifying sea creatures ever discovered <laughs> i wonder if we see the kraken let's have a look shall we <laughs> Video, you'll meet modern and prehistoric ocean terrors. Kind of like this fish that has a bite oh, as bad fuck. as it looks. And the deadliest whale of all time. I had to do the... I know sharks are for the best part. I know... Trust me, I watched Wildlife Pro. I don't know what sharks are like, but... As a kid, ever since I watched Jaws, it's like, oh. I would shit a brick. You know what I mean? Chronosaurus, one of the largest and one of the deadliest marine reptiles in the history of life on Earth, the Chronosaurus was the scourge of the early Cretaceous seas. This monster in particular was a pliosaur, a fearsome family of marine reptiles that had massive heads, short necks, and relatively broad flippers. Measuring 33 feet from snout to tail and weighing in in the neighborhood of 7 to 10 tons, Chronosaurus was one of the biggest pliosaurs to have ever roamed the Earth's oceans. Their teeth were a few inches long, but not particularly sharp, lacking the flesh-cutting abilities of other reptile teeth. I would still share break. However, it then made up for it with its sheer bite force to quickly incapacitate all types of prey, and lightning fast speed that enables the animal to chase down prey with ease. When it comes to prey, there's evidence that Chronosaurus preyed on other massive marine reptiles, such as the long-necked plesiosaurs. One particular plesiosaur fossil found in Australia bore the distinct bite marks of a Chronosaur on its skull. The Giant Stingray The Giant Stingray is a behemoth of a fish, growing up to 17 feet across and weighing up to 1,300 pounds. They can be found in the fresh and brackish waters from the Mekong River to northern Australia. I know they're big and they're, they're, some, you know, they're some of the biggest divers, but I didn't think they got that big. However, what you may not know is that stingrays are prehistoric fish. They've been around since a few million years after the dinosaurs died out and have proven to be a successful design, much like the sharks they descended from. Although stingrays do not readily attack humans, they are incredibly dangerous to fool around with, even if you don't know you're fooling with one. Each ray has a sharp barb on the base of its tail that can easily penetrate human skin and bone, much like a hunting arrow. This stinger can be as long as 15 inches and typically introduces toxins to the victim's wounds, which can lead to intense pain, nausea, weakness, and fainting. And if that happens in the water, good luck. That's Steve Irwin, didn't it? That's what happened to him. Dunkley Osteus. Living around 360 million years ago, Dunkley Osteus was one of the largest and one of the last of a group of fish called the Arthrodires. These fish had thick bony plates covering their skulls and with a full body length of up to 6 meters. Couple all that with the armored headgear of the largest Dunkley Osseus fossils that are positively nightmarish. New fossil research shows that as full-grown adults, these top predators had jaws strong enough to take down just about anything in their habitat, even each other. Dunkley Osseus did not have true teeth, though. They had something a tad bit scarier. Their skull's bony plates extended into sharpened fangs in front of their mouths. These fangs then scraped together continuously, oh. sharpening each other as the fish opened and closed its jaws. Thanks to as these monstrous fish grew up, their mouths changed, their jaws gradually lengthened, while the fangs up front grew sturdier. This meant the jaws of an adult closed more slowly, but with a lot more power. While the younger fish were eating smaller, jaws, softer sharp, prey, the adults were capable of punching through even other... Don't get wrong, I can watch jaws now, but what I'm saying is, as a child, is that primal thing in it, because it's a shark. Yeah, wait a minute. It's like that. You, you will. Is you, 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 you. Well, I don't. I think well, I'm going to Greece in next year. Hopefully, so hopefully I won't bump into one. But you know what I mean. Though the point is, it's something that's primal. It's something that's real. I'm not saying the other stuff I react to or talk about, or whatever, is not real. But you know what I mean. It's but it's just the lunging ah, at all the camera. It's like really, dude, really. Heavily armored prey. The Vampire Squid The Vampire Squid looks like something that swam out of a late-night science fiction movie. 
but in spite of its monstrous name, it is a small creature, going to only about six inches in length. Beautiful. The vampire Beautiful. squid's body is covered with light-producing organs called photophores. This gives the squid the unique ability to turn itself on or... So I asked a beautiful fish. I mean, it's not a fish, but you know what I mean? It's beautiful. It's a beautiful creature. I love octopuses. It's very intelligent and fascinating creatures. Off at will through a chemical process known as bioluminescence. When the photophores are off, the squid is completely invisible in the dark waters where it lives. The squid has incredible control over these light organs, and it has the ability to modulate the size and intensity of the photophores to create complex patterns that can be used to disorient predators and as well as attract prey. Not much else is actually known about the feeding and mating habits of the vampire squid, mostly because observing them in their natural habitat for a prolonged period of time is virtually impossible. So I think it's called a vampire squid because of oct or octopus, sorry, because of uh, um, blah, 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 blah. the shape of it. It looks like a bat wings, you know, like Dracula with a spiky, you know, not real spikes, you know I mean, the barbs and stuff. Yummy. You know the look of it. Any footage of them, like the one you're seeing, is very valuable to scientists. The Pacific Viperfish. The Viperfish is one of the most unusual looking fish in the deep sea. It's also one of the most popular and well known species. Known as one of the fiercest predators of the deep, this fish can be easily recognized by its large mouth and sharp fang like teeth. In fact, these fangs are so large that they will not fit inside the mouth. Instead, they curve back very close to the fish's eyes. The Viperfish is thought to use these sharp teeth to impale its victims while swimming at them at high speeds. Of course, that's just speculation, as like with most deep sea creatures, little is actually known about this guy. Because of the extreme depths at which they're found, very little is known about the reproductive habits of the viperfish. It is believed that they are external spawners, meaning that the female releases eggs into the water to be fertilized. Spawning probably occurs throughout the year, although the numbers of young larvae have been discovered to be highest between January and March. These larvae are approximately 6 millimeters long when they hatch, and they're left to fend for themselves until they can reach maturity. Not much is known about the lifespan of the viperfish as well, but most researchers think they live between 15 and 30 years. In captivity, though, they rarely live longer than a few hours. It's probably because the, the captivity, because it, also it's hard to keep sharp. I mean, of course you got, I mean, the, the whelp was that come up with, is it Carball? I can't remember now. Somewhere there, it's got the world's largest swimming pool. You, you could probably house a shark in that. Because it's like, God knows how many football stadiums across. But it's like, let's course you've got a massive, uh, what's it, uh, aquarium that's large enough to house. It's like wild birds. If you have a wild bird as a pet and you don't want it to fly off, you need to build a cage that's quite high up. So if people are driving past, they'll see a, a mesh across, you know, over your, ha not over your house, but you know what I mean, over the area. Because they need quite a large space to fly about. It's the same with a great white shark or anything like that. So, you know, keeping sharks, you know what I mean? Because they always constant motion, they, they need the leg room, as it were. Um, but I think with these little, those little critters, it's probably due to the lack of pressure, because they say it's intense pressure. The Japanese spider crab. Mm. If spiders creep you out, then this massive deep sea spider will probably make you panic. Massive. And while it's not actually a spider, the Japanese spider crab has long spider-like legs that scuttles across the ocean floor and can get monstrously massive in size. Scientists and researchers estimate that this crab can weigh up to 44 pounds and have a leg span of 13 feet at their largest. Not only does this mean that this crab could actually tower over you if it wanted to, but it also makes it the largest crab in the entire friggin' world. They're not exactly hunters, but these crabs have been known to eat algae, kelp, mollusks, slow-moving invertebrates, and the dead bodies of any creatures that happen to be floating around. Ooh, that's just terrifying. In fact, this last option seems to be their favorite, as they seem to prefer to... That one he's picking up is small compared to how big they are. I mean, I think I've seen one in a museum or something. I can't remember now, but it, they're massive. Yeah. Scavenge dead flesh rather than kill things themselves. Now, their legs may be spindly, but they can seriously hurt you. They don't often hunt their prey, but they can move quickly when needed thanks to these long legs and are able to kill smaller animals with ease. Their claws are also strong and large enough to pry open muscles and clams in order to get at the tasty flesh inside. In fact, when this crab was first discovered, the researcher documenting it noted that it could inflict some serious injuries to humans, and had in fact done so while being caught. Megalodon. Oh, here we go. 
If he's only on this Here list because I know you'll all ask me about it. Like I just said, the Meg is probably the best known creature on the list. Given that it's a shark the size of a school bus and beyond, it's really not that easy to keep it out of pop culture. Plus, science-minded entertainment sources like the Discovery Channel love creatures that can pass for a movie monster. Despite the popular idea that Megalodon coexisted with dinosaurs, they only lived from 25 to 1.5 million years ago. Meaning that at best, they missed the last dinosaur by 40 million years. On the other hand, though, this meant that they might have still been around for the very first very tasty humans. More than likely apex predators wherever they went, the Megalodon swam the warm oceans that were around until the last ice age and the early Pleistocene, which may have robbed them of their breeding grounds and food. Despite being universally considered to be extinct, this biggest of all known predatory sharks still strikes fear in our hearts, which probably explains why reported modern sightings of the Megalodon still get a lot of attention. The Megamouth Shark the Megamouth Shark is not the largest shark, but it's plenty big enough to be considered ultra-frightening. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you know, a lot of my fear comes from about great whites and it with um, jaws and stuff, but yeah, but it's terrifying to think, though, that it just, you know, it is incredible, but also terrifying the fact that you imagine like a great white saying that's ten times the size of that actually lived, you know, you could stand in its mouth. That's really, like, freaky, isn't it? Imagine if you're a caveman, you went swimming. If they were around during the first early men, imagine that. You'd be shitting and puking before you died. Megamouths are deep sea sharks that reach up to 18 feet in length, and in reality, they're actually harmless. They're rarely seen by humans, and even if you did run into one, it would be extremely unlikely to hurt you. This is because it's in the same family as whale sharks and basking sharks, which instead of meat, they eat plankton and jellyfish. They have rows upon rows of small, sharp teeth, but they're intended for eating small fish, not people. The reason Megamouths are so scary is actually just the way they look, because they swim with their massive jaws spread open at all times, sweeping up fish and krill like a vacuum. Not exactly a appealing image. This is actually one of the most recent shark species discovered, first being spotted in 1976 near the Hawaiian coast. Since then, they've been seen off the coast of Australia. See, I think you see about the ocean. That's, see, that was, it's like that Lovecraft thing, the cosmic horror, it's that unknown factor that's chilling the most, you know, because the ocean's so deep and we, we know more about space, apparently, than we do the ocean. We know more about space than we know about the ocean. The ocean's just a, you can drive down there in your car and it's there. How long we be on this planet and yet we know very little? So think of the horrors that could await in the deep. Maybe the crack in itself, or the great slumbering Cthulhu. We don't know. Yeah, Africa, Mexico, and even California. That's what terrifies me more than sharks. California. There seem to be more sightings of them close to Asia, though. Specifically, they've been seen off the coast of Taiwan, Japan, and the Philippines. Lead Sixthus. Of all the fish to ever swim in the seas, Lead Sixthus Problematicus may be the record holder for the world's largest. Working with bits and pieces of incomplete skeletons, scientists have had a hard time figuring out the precise dimensions of the enormous creature, hence the name. In fact, it led to scientists grossly overestimating its size. Despite the miscalculation, it still is in the running for being the largest fish to have ever existed. According to the most recent estimates, though, they grew to around 55 feet in length, significantly larger than the whale shark, the largest fish living today. Like many other sea giants, Lead Sickness survived by feeding on some of the smallest creatures in the sea. Plankton probably made up of a majority of their diet, although it's difficult to pinpoint the feeding habits of an extinct animal. Scientists believe that even though the largest discovered specimen was around 55 feet, that these animals could likely have grown to be even bigger. Now it's time for the day's best pick. Today's photo is really quite disturbing to look at. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a dead mermaid, but not the kind we're used to seeing. Its tail looks more serpentine rather than fish-like, and I'm pretty sure none of you would want to encounter this thing on your next fishing trip. Thankfully, though, this is just a doctored photo, and mermaids are still considered mythical despite numerous alleged sightings. I am about to say, we went from prehistoric, which have gone, so we'd have to be scared of them, and, you know, various other things, you know, I mean, they could have put... I don't know why they, put, they didn't have a giant squid in this one. Probably there's another video, I don't know. They probably didn't put it in another video, so they only repeat it. But yes. 
This is more cryptids, this last one, isn't it? Next creature on our list, though, is 100% real, though, and is probably going to be a headliner in the new Jurassic World movie. <laughs> Mazasaurus. The ocean is a scary enough today with the... Yeah. As I pointed out in the trailer when I did reaction to the trailer, the, the Monosaurus... Right, don't get me wrong, it's still big, but it was probably the big... Imagine the world's largest alligator. I think they... Or, or say, a great white shark. It was probably that, that size. It wasn't it wasn't ginormous like it was made out in Jurassic Park. Or sorry, Jurassic World. But then again, Velociraptors are not that big either. They're about the size of a dog or a cat, so... But it just looks good. That's why they make it massive. Number of massive predators swimming in it. Just imagine adding these monstrous reptiles into the mix. Now, mosasaurs are very large, extinct marine reptiles with some species reaching lengths of over 50 feet and are considered to be some of the most fearsome predators to ever inhabit our oceans. They first emerged during the Cretaceous period 90 million years ago and quickly became the ocean's dominant predators. They went extinct during the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction. Put like this, they're probably the size of a killer whale, or like I said, 50 foot, but the one in Jurassic World is not 50 foot, that's just like massive. That's just, that's just out of proportion, you know what I mean? An event which killed all of the dinosaurs. Being very voracious eaters, they'd eat anything that would come into range of their massive jaws. Mosasaur fossils unearthed with other animal remains preserved where the stomach would have been have allowed scientists to conclude that these formidable hunters would have dined on fish, sharks, marine reptiles, including other mosasaurs, seabirds, and any dinos that got too close to the water. The Hagfish. The Hagfish is living proof that one doesn't have to be dangerous in order to be absolutely terrifying. Now, the Hagfish has no jaw, so it's not a threat to people. But that's where the good news ends. One only needs to touch a Hagfish to know it's not a fish to be messed with. You see, Hagfish have a very unique defensive mechanism. Their bodies can produce copious amounts of slime, hence the other name, the Slime Eel. This vicious goo is so thick that as soon as they slime up inside a predator's mouth, it makes them unappetizing and literally hard to swallow. But wait, there's more! Since they don't have jaws, they eat by wiggling their way into decaying underwater carcasses. It's gross, but evolutionary speaking, it works. 76 species of hagfish exist today, with some growing up to 40 inches in length. And also, did you know that there's a high possibility that you're walking around now with a hagfish in your pocket or in your purse? Hagfish skin, devoid of slime, actually makes perfectly good leather. In fact, if you own an eel skin wallet, chances are it's actually from a hagfish. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So, here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Leviathan. Today's oceans, killer whales hunt other species of whales, working in pack to take down their much bigger prey. They're kind of jerks like that. Living whales, though, have it easy. Those that swam off the coast of Peru around 12 million years ago were hunted by a far bigger predator. This recently discovered leviathan of an animal has a very appropriate name, leviathan. At between 13.5 and 18.5 meters in length, it was no bigger than the modern sperm whale, but it was clearly far more formidable. While modern sperm whales have no upper teeth and only use their lower teeth to settle disputes with other whales, Leviathan had a full set of chompers, the largest of which were about a foot long and around four inches wide. It then grabbed its prey with a powerful bite, inflicting deep wounds and tearing off flesh as killer whales do, but with a skull three times as big. Needless to say, the Leviathan was an apex predator. It's even thought that these massive marine mammals hunted their own kind, mainly baleen whales. See you guys next time. It's even thought that these massive marine... Blowing. Yeah. So yeah. Mm, yes, good job a lot of those are still not around today, fingers crossed. Yeah, well, because people say Megalodon's still around, but I doubt it. You know what I mean? Because temp temperature-wise, there's no reason why it won't surface now, if that makes sense. It, the, you know what I mean? It's swam in these oceans. It's, it's not going to not gonna stay... You know what I mean? There are certain circumstances throughout our temperature climate where it would have gone, hmm, I fancy a swim up there. If that makes sense. You know what I mean? But um, fingers crossed it's, it doesn't exist. But yeah. But yeah. 
and the thing is, like they said, like they discovered that weird fish or that big fish. It's kind of like, yeah, so much yet lurking in the deep yet to, to be to discovered. So, anyway, hope you like this video. Thanks for watching this with me. And if you like the video, hit like. And if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe. It'd be great to have you here. And until the next video, guys, take care and be well.